so much and feed them too much so they're getting better like these pictures and maybe you think it looks so adorable but actually it's really a important issues um, in veterinary because maybe obesity may lead to several um, respiratory disease in cats so um, we could we shouldn't ignore if these issues so um, the difference between ideal weight cats and obese cats are still not so clear. So my objective is to classify the obese and non-obese cats from the tidal breathing patterns. And also I would like to examine the difference in tidal breathing patterns between obese and non-obese cats. So here's my procedure. In this flow chart you can see that I introduced the data collection and equi equipment first. And then the second part is signal preprocessing pre method. And then I will show you how do I tr uh, quantify the traits to describe the properties of my, of my data. And then I will do the classify, classify method to um, differentiate the obesity cats and non-obese cats. And then I will do the um, trait selection to figure out the critical properties of obese and non-obese cats. So, okay, let's go to data collection and equipment. So in my study, I have 14 samples as my, as the, my data source. So, um, the 14 cats are all client-owned cats and they are all recruited from the National Taiwan University Veterinary Hospital. Um, in my case, I have six ideal weight cats and eight obese cats. And you can see this, this chart. This chart is body conditional, body conditional score chart. And you can see that it describes the, how, how obesity is the cats from their body shape or their body landmark. Like you can see the level one, the cats look, um, look quite skinny and the level nine, you can see that cat, the cat looks so round and in a very obesity shape. So in my case, I have six, six, um, six ideal weight cats in the um, five, in the level five and eight obese cats in the level eight and nine. And the equipment we used is barometric whole body plant mammography system. And it's a transparent chamber with the sensors built inside the chamber wall. So you can see that the cats can stay inside the chamber and they can breathe totally free and they don't truly. So we can get the natural um, breathing data. And then I'll show you the signal preprocessing step. Um, in this figure, this is the raw data I, we, get, we can get from the chamber. So um, the x-axis is the time and the y-axis is the flow. Um, so we have to do the first step is data smoothing. I, as you can see that there are so many noise in the raw data. So we want to use moving average to reduce the noise in the data. So you can get the lower, lower figure. The data is getting smoother. 
and then the second step is oxidation removing, because in the in our data we have so many oxidation, and it may cause that it's um, difficult to define where is the um, where is the beginning of the inspiratory period and where is the end of the expiratory period. So we use we use exhalation method removing um, we set a threshold and um, when the value is smaller than the smaller than the threshold it will be set to zero like the figure like the lower figure. And the last step is to find a to define the endpoints of the look of the data, so we can describe the completely describe the complete um, complete breathing breathing period using define the endpoints. So after these three steps, we can we can get a complete period of breathing signals and then calculate the, and then integrating the flow signal to the time and then we can assemble this PTBFB loop. It is widely used in um, veterinary to assess the long function. So as we have the flow time signal and the PTBFB loop, it can be used to do the following step. Trade quantification. So, all trades are divided into three parts. The first one is BWBP trades, and the second one is PTBFEL trades, and the third one is morphological trades. So totally we have 34 trades, and they are all, um, they are all, re um, all required, um, all obtained from the, these two kinds of data. So the first one is BWBP trade. And this is the most essential trade because um, this is most essential trade because they are all um, already widely used in the vet veterinary. So they can be divided into four parts, including time related trades, volume related trades, flow related trades and derived traits. And the second part is PTBFEL traits. This part are used to suggest that's the shape of the inspiratory part of the loop. So for example, for example the EF25 means the inspiratory flow when the when the respiratory period complete to 25%. And EF50 means the expiratory flow complete to 50% of the complete loop. So we can use this different stage of the index um, to describe the shape of the loop. And the third one is morphological traits. This trait is quite new and um, in the reason it's used in the human infant is so this is the first time we use it to describe the um, respiratory properties in animals. So it is also used to describe the shape of the loop and it can be divided into four parts include sphericity, triangularity, rectangularity and wavelengths. So the first one is sphericity. Um, the concept is to figure out the inscribed, inscribed circle and the circumscribed circle. So like you can define the sphericity of the inspiratory semi loop and the sphericity of the expiratory semi loop and compare the loop and the circumcircle to de describe how the loop is, how close the loop, um, how close the, how, 
how round the loop close to a real circle. And the second one is triangularity. And you have to figure out, figure out the inner triangular to describe how the loop close to a real, um, how the loop close to a triangle. So here we have triangularity of the inspiratory semi-loop and the expiratory semi-loop. And then we have re re rectangularity. We use the inscribed rectangular and the circumscribed rectangular to describe how the loop close to a rectangle. And then we have weakness. It is used to describe the how the loop has the oscillation or have some peak happen inside the loop. So the, we have to figure out the peak or the um, figure out the peak in the loop and then get the calculate um, cumulative value. So with this trace, we can do the following step is to classify. So here I develop a soft margin support vector machines classified with RBF kernels. And then the strategy we use is leave one of cross-validation. It means that um, all the data can divide it into many subgroups and um, each data can be the test data for once, and other data can be the training data. And the last step is um, trace selection, because we have to um, we have to evaluate the optimal parameters, that is the cost and gamma in the uh, support vector machine classifier. And we have to figure out which trace is really the critical trace to differentiate the two groups of cats. So we use genetic algorithm. The concept of this algorithm is just like the survival of the fitness from Darwin. So just like the biological evolution, you have to, we have the initial population and we select the, the candidates randomly and do the crossover and mutation, and then evaluate the uh, performance of the classifier. If the classifier reach the terminal um, criteria, and it, um, the, the procedure can be stopped. So in our case, the candidates are all the parameters and all the 34 traits. And our uh, terminal termination criteria is the operation if the operation reached 500 times, or well, the performance stopped improving. So here's our result. You can see that the classifier with the selected traits can reach the 85% um, of accuracy. And this is much better than the other case that is if we input all 34 traits inside the um, classifier, or we use um, other three kinds of traits. So here's the conclusion. We can know that the breathing pattern of obese and non-obese cats can really be classified using SVM. And further, we can GA, or GA can improve the performance of the classifier, and with the crucial traits can be figured out to to differentiate differentiate um, ideal weight cats and obese cats. Thanks for your attention. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, any questions or comments from the audience? No. I, first of all, I have two questions. So the first one, so in your presentation, you introduced a new method to classify yeah. a piece and not a piece cat. So I'd like to know now what method is used to classify. What method? Yes. Um, I use support vector machines, SVM. No, no, not for modern. I mean, usually, what method is used to classify which is a piece, um, which is not a piece? 
Um, actually, classify the obese and non-obese method is not widely used in veterinary. It is a quite new topic. Um, before this research, most of the previous research used a statistical analysis to try to find the difference between obese and non-obese group. Also, QOP was also said obesity and non-obesity use some indicators to, to classify the degree of uh, obesity. So this is one question. So the second one, so in your model, uh, you only have uh, 14 yes. uh, observation samples. Yeah. But the model you used uh, more than 30 predictor variables. So this may be one problem. Yeah, so we just try to use GA generated algorithm to um, to um, avoid the overfitting problem. Mm -hmm. So that's why that's why the select yeah, yeah. trace get a better performance. Yeah, I understand. But the big problem is when the predictor the number of predictor variables is larger than the observation variables. Sometimes yeah. overfitting yeah. occurs this problem. Yeah. Even you use a lot of, uh, such as you use the support vector system, yeah. machine system, I mean, genetic algorithm, this also causes a lot of noise in the world. So this is the important yeah. issue we have to solve. Yes, yes. Hi, thank you very much. Thank you. Next, I would like to move to